Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video we're going to take a quick look at an entertaining chess miniature played by American chess player Bob Renault. His opponent's name is unknown and this game was played in 1974 in Cincinnati, which is a city in Ohio. Renault opened up with e4 to which black answered with e5. f4, white goes for king's gambit. He takes f4, king's gambit accept hit knight f3 g5. Bishop c4, g4, attacking white knight. And in here, instead of thinking about uh, moving the knight away, as you know, the old masters didn't have a reverse gear, white castled king side, and we have a peace sacrifice. Muzio, Muzio gambit is on the board, which is allowing white to gain lead in development and launch a quick attack. Queen f6, black queen is coming to protect the knight on f4, of course white won't go for queen takes f4, that can allow black to trade over the queens, that's why we have e5. Uh, white is sacrificing the e-pawn as well in order to open up the e-file. And there it goes, this time we have bishop takes f7, we have double muzio. White is sacrificing the second piece in order to force opponent's king to move. Is depriving the king in future from castling, is exposing further, and now we'll proceed with the attack. D4. We have another pawn sacrifice, and this pawn sacrifice is allowing white to open up the dark squared bishop's diagonal with the tempo. By the way, at this point, modern engines suggest queen f5, but in our game we have queen takes d4 check, bishop f3, the bishop is of course untouchable because the pawn is pinned, that's why after bishop e3, black queen retreated back, although better is playing queen g7 and leaving the f6 square free for the knight. If bishop d4 then rook g8 creating a mating threat, if g3 then queen g5, uh, Black is always happy to give up uh, one piece in order to neutralize the attack. Let's not forget that Black has a huge material advantage. But in our game we have queen f6. Bishop takes f4, bishop g7, knight c3, knight e7. Look, Muzio gambit requires an utmost precision from Black's side. Black has to be very careful when defending, and that's something which is difficult to do, especially when these masters were playing against amateurs. It's natural, yes, that those amateurs could not find the right path in those difficult positions, and here we have it. On move 12, Black is already making a mistake. Petr was playing knight c6. If knight d5, then just queen f5. But in our game we have knight e7, which is losing. There comes knight d5, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, check, queen e6, bishop d2, discover check, king g8. And now a question arises, how should white proceed? You can pause the video and try to find white's next moves. Ready? Well, look, right now the queen on d5 is hanging. Of course, you can move it away, but the most precise move is the move made by Bob Renault. And that move is rook e1. Yes, you are free to uh, win this queen, but now white rook is penetrating the 8th rank and a checkmate is coming. Bishop f8, bishop h6, and yeah, there is no escape. Interesting thing is that this position was also seen in 1954 in Moscow, in a game played between Valodin Smirnov and Tikhanov. Uh, in that game, black resigned, but in our game, Mr. NN played up to the checkmate. Queen g7, check, and then we have a checkmate. What is this? Opera mate? Yeah, the bishop together with the rook are announcing a checkmate. Black has a huge material advantage, but there was no time to develop them, and that's ended. Tragically, Black King is dead. In the end, the chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video. Take care.